Welcome to Overthinking Tech. This is part one of my series on how to set up a Home Assistant dashboard. Now for this series, I'm going to assume that you already have Home Assistant installed and you're trying to go from a blank canvas to something like the example page that Home Assistant provides. For this video, we're gonna look at setting up a button, changing some aspects of that button and how to combine multiple buttons into a grid. The first thing we need to do is simply go to Edit Dashboard. From here, we can add a card, and if all we want to do is add a basic button, we can select Button and select from the Entity list what we want to control. For this, I'm going to stick with the Closet Light. We can rename it, but we can also change things like the icon type. Now I'm using the default Home Assistant install. I haven't added any additional icons or themes to this, so you should also have access to all of these. The list is quite long, so I generally recommend that you type in what you're looking for and then select from icons that have that within their name. Say, for example, a light. We can also change things like the icon height. This allows us to control the general height of our button. We can select whether or not we want the name to show up, as well as the state, or even the icon itself. We can also change its behavior. By default, when you click a button, it toggles it, meaning it turns it off and on again. That's normally what we want. But we can also change what long pressing a button does. By default, we get more information. We'll look at what that means in a second. If we click Save on this, we see our button. And when we click Done, we just have that simple button. Clicking it changes the state. Holding gives us more information, things like when the button was on or off last. But if we take a look at this on a mobile screen, we can see that that button is taking up the full width of our device. Now, this might be fine for a phone, though personally I like my buttons to be a little bit more condensed than that. But if you want to set up a touch interface on something like a tablet, we're probably going to want buttons that don't take up the full width of the device. To accomplish this, we can go back to Edit. We can actually just delete this button. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go Add Card, and we're going to use the Grid Card. The grid card allows us to decide how many columns we want our device's screen split into. Personally, I think that three columns ends up being a very good fit for the devices I use. So I'm going to leave it at the default three. Once again, I can then select button. And here, it'll default to the same closet light. I can change the icon, just like before. I can change the name, just like before. Icon height. All of that's exactly the same. I can also add another button. By clicking this plus here, I can actually add any card I want to be right next to that first button. I'm going to add a second button. And for this one, I think I'm going to control my fish tank. I can change the icon here to be something more appropriate for a fish tank. I can control icon height. Maybe I want the fish to be really little. Okay, perhaps not that little. Personally, I think I'm just going to leave that at the default. I can also change the name. And I can change the button's behavior. I'm going to leave toggle the same so that it turns the fish tank light on and off. But for this one, let's look at what happens if I change it to URL for hold action. I'll need to enter a URL, Wikipedia click Save, and Done. Now I have two buttons that are right next to each other. If we look at my phone again, we can see that I now have two buttons on the screen instead of just one. Clicking allows me to toggle the device. And if we long press, we can see those predefined behaviors. Long pressing on the closet light gives us the more information. Long pressing on the fish tank opens Wikipedia. 
So that's been adding a button to the Home Assistant dashboard, putting multiple buttons into a grid, and changing the behavior and look of those buttons. In the next video, we'll look at how to set up a script that can control multiple devices at the same time.